All right, it's uh, three o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we want to be respectful of our, our guests' time today. Um, again, if, if you were on earlier, you heard me apologize to Adam. I forgot to send him an itinerary. Um, generally, I, I like him to kind of lead these meetings. Um, not a lot of new updates for you guys, but I did want to share just a, a couple things with you real quick before um, I turn it over to Ryan. Um, you should have all gotten the schedule that I've been emailing out to everybody. And Alyssa is going to be taking over the email. I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but you can see the schedule that we've got. Um, we've got Ryan talking to us today. And then on Thursday is an Indianapolis Colts Sports and Business Forum. If you've been in my classes, you've heard about this. A lot of, a number of you um, have, have been to this before in the past. It's virtual this year. It's 10 bucks. Um, Sport Management Club isn't going to cover the cost, but um, 10 bucks is a pretty small price to pay. And that's going to be on Thursday, October 1st at 1. And you get a chance to hear from people from the front office of the Colts and the different areas that you can work in uh, in professional sport, ticketing, sponsorship, um, marketing, community relations. Um, it's always a really good event. And then you can see we've got speakers lined up for these next four dates. Um, and we still have one opening on November 18th. So if one of you knows kind of a, a cool, compelling speaker that would like to join us, um, feel free to reach out. And if they're interested, let me know and, and I'll get a Zoom set up for them. Right? I also wanted to let you know about um, our social media pages. Um, we've got a YouTube page. So our meetings will be recorded and they'll be put up on YouTube for our students to enjoy. Uh, so if somebody misses a meeting, they can go back and see it. Um, or, you know, we've had some guest speakers that have been really good in the past that I think it's great to learn from. And those will be up on YouTube. So just um, go to Trine University Sport Management on YouTube, um, subscribe, and you can see our videos and our meetings posted there. And then um, we also have a Twitter account. Let me bring this up real quick. Yep. Uh, Trine uh, Sport Management Club on Twitter. It's at Trine SM Club. And you can see everything going on with the club there on Twitter. So with that, I did, I'll stop sharing the screen here. I did want to congratulate Nicole and Alyssa, Nicole Moroni and Alyssa Moore. They actually tied for the director of PR and membership. Uh, that's the first time that's happened. So I, I talked with Adam and, and talked with Andrew, our vice president, our VP, or I'm sorry, our president and VP. And we all agreed that um, we thought it'd be a good idea for them to share the roles. So Alyssa is going to be in charge of um, emailing everybody in the club. So when we have new things coming up, we have meetings coming up, when we have announcements, she will email that. She's also going to take minutes of the meeting um, and she'll send those out after the meeting. If you know anybody wants to get involved with the club, have them reach out to Alyssa. She'll put them on the list. And then Nicole's going to be running um, our Twitter page and, and maybe adding some, some new things. We talked about possibly Instagram account. She'll take pictures that will in, take video that we'll put on our YouTube. So i um, really excited to have them joining us and, and picking up where uh, Cassidy uh, left off from last year. So congratulations to Alyssa and Nicole. All right. So without any further ado, I want to introduce Ryan Roberts, one of our esteemed Trine University alumni, one of our sport management alumni. Uh, Ryan graduated, was it 2010? 2012. 2012. And he started his career with the, uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in ticket sales and uh, has worked in uh, Major League Lacrosse and now in sport and entertainment travel. So um, I'm going to cede the floor to Ryan. Tell us a little bit about your background, what you've done since you've graduated, and, and what you're doing today. Yeah, so like we alluded to, I graduated in 2012. Um, my time at Trine was a lot different than y'all's time at, at Trine. Um, you guys did a lot more fancy gadgets and clubs and things that I would have never dreamed that we would have had when I was when I was there. Um, but sure, we're we're having equally as great times. Um, but no, yeah, after I graduated, worked at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, went the ticket sales route, um, outbound ticket sales. Um, and then I kind of just enjoyed it. And I was kind of, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the environment and the company a lot more than I did the job uh, per se, but I was there for seven years. I didn't want to leave. I really enjoyed it. Um, but then 
for and then a little bit after that, after my seven years were up, I, I decided to move on. Um, worked, moved down to Atlanta. Worked for um, an indoor lacrosse um, team, um, and then after was just just down there for a year, and then moved back to Indianapolis and uh, started uh, sports entertainment travel. Um, but yeah, it's nice mix. Um, doing, I mean, IMS is just your your standard outbound ticket sales that I'm sure all of you guys are. If you want to work for a sports team, you're already thinking about this is probably what I'm going to have to do, um, which you get out of that what you're going to put into it. Um, and then I did the exact same outbound. Uh, working for a team was a little different than working for just at IMS. It was all event based. Um, so it wasn't as different as it is working for a team um, like I did um, in lacrosse. Um, but I did more more sales um, that way it was a lot more b2b working for a team um a lot more face-to-face -face, um meeting setting up meetings and meeting people and things like that whereas working at ims it was 95 percent on all on the phone combination phone email um and then um, I got tired of doing the sales the sales role in a way so when i when i left the lacrosse team um, I wanted to do, I wanted to get out of sales. Um, I was kind of just over it a little bit. Um, and uh, thankfully I stumbled into this role, sports entertainment travel. Um, what we are, we are um, a sports travel company. We partner with colleges across the country and uh, we're their official travel provider. Um, work with a lot of alumni associations and uh, athletic departments and we um, coordinate we set up travel packages for alumni and fans um, make their official travel party um, things of that nature um, primarily we do um, the college football bowl games um, so like this last bowl season um, we had we traveled three of the four in the college football playoff um, both Wisconsin and Oregon in the Rose Bowl um, we had uh, Minnesota went to the Outback Bowl in Tampa. Um, I think we had like 12, 12 teams that went to bowls, traveled just under 5,000 fans. Um, so it, that this job, it's completely different. I mean, I'm, I'm traveling. In theory, I should be – let's see. Hold on. Let me look at my calendar. I'll tell you guys where I should be right now. I should be – going to Wisconsin um, tomorrow for App State Wisconsin. So I should be I should be in Madison, Wisconsin right now or getting ready to go to Madison. But uh, with I haven't been able to travel since I got back from Tampa for the Outback Bowl. So it's been a unfortunate year, but we're getting through it, gearing up for a big 2021. Um, big news that the Big Ten is coming back with football here. Um, started in October, so hopefully we can get some fans in. We're maybe fingers crossed. We're gonna let's see, we'll see what happens with some of the big bowl games. NCAA did announce that they're gonna do the playoff and New Year's Six bowls. So um, we're keeping our fingers crossed. We can move some move some fans for that. Um, but let's see. Just for, so for outside of bowl travel, we'll do like a football weekend. So we'll do. Football weekends, um, we also do, we call them specialty tours, whereas um, Kentucky Derby, Masters, Indy 500, um, Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, um, just big, big events like that, we'll do those, whereas those are open to lots of different, different schools. So our Kentucky Derby trip this year was supposed to, we were, when it got all canceled and things, uh, we had 300. 300 fit travelers for that um, next year we think will be just under 400 so big move some big numbers for that um, but no it'll be good um, what do you want me how what parts of my day you want me to dive into no that's all right I'll, I'll kind of I'll kind of lead you and I want to let the students know if anybody has questions as we go we're kind of opening this up as a QA. and a um, so feel free to take yourself off mute and, and please ask and, and pick Ryan's brain. Yes, please um, interrupt and, me. Yeah, he's been he's been great with our students. So he's he's an open book. Um, so you graduated from trying and you go to work for IMS. Um, how did that come about? How, how did you land that job? 
Yeah, so um, the spring of 2012, right before graduation, the Pacers, Pacers have their annual career fair type deal. Um, I'm sure, I think they still do it. They should yep. still do it. Um, so went the, down to there. Um, that thing was very stressful. Um, and because basically you're just there with hundreds of other people standing in lines for 30 seconds to talk to someone, hand them in a resume, cross your fingers, you left a memorable um, an impression on them. Um, I didn't, um, to be honest with you. Um, I got the job because um, I followed up. Um, that's probably the, the biggest thing is I followed up with a phone call um, like a week later and I spoke with I don't even think I, the person I spoke with on my follow-up um, wasn't even someone I talked to at the career fair. Um, it was just the timing thing. They were meeting um, the folks that were at the career fair for my mess. They were kind of just trying to cover every department. So um, I got in touch with um, my boss, that guy who ended up being my boss. And he said, yeah, this is great. Send me, he asked for, I resent him my resume. Um, I think I resent to him when I was on the phone, emailed it to him and he went over it and had an interview um, that next week. And what do they say? Rest is history. <laughs> so in the IMS, it's a little unique as compared to like team sports as an inside sales rep. Um, you guys don't have that big of a, or, or you didn't have that big of a staff there, right? There was only just like a handful of people on tickets or. Yeah. So on the sales team, so the ticket office as a whole probably had 15 or has currently that still has about 15. Um, and if, if you think about that, your professional sports team, their ticket office, their full ticket office is going to be 30 plus. Um, and the IMS ticket office is half that. And they, they hand, they hand package 300,000 tickets for Indy 500. Um, but the sales team, when I started, we were a group of five. Um, we got down to as few as three, um, just as um, some people left. And um, so we down to as few as three. And then when I left, um, I think we were back up to Brown five again. So were you selling for all the events or just the Indy 500? Nope, we sold for all of them. It was kind of a cycle. The Indy 500 um, took up a big chunk of our time um, from my my sales, I, I think Indy 500 probably was about 80% of the revenue that I brought in. Um, but, but yeah, it was just, we sold every event. We would, every event on top of all the other events, um, just whatever one was next was our main focus at the time. So what was your day-to-day -day like then with the, with the IMS? Um, were you, I imagine you were on the phone making a lot of calls. Were you calling individual ticket sales? Was it groups? Was it corporations or everything in between? Yeah, it was a good mix. Um, when I first started, we didn't do a lot of corporate outreach. Um, the, the department wasn't, there weren't, and there weren't enough people to do it. Um, that wasn't the focus of it. Um, so we did, it was just a lot of individuals and former groups. A group at IMS was 20 or more. Uh, so um, we would hit, we'd hit those um, making between, when I first started, I was making a hundred calls a day. Um, it takes a lot of time management. Luckily, I was luck lucky there that once my boss realized that I could handle it, I knew what I was doing. Um, it kind of was just left it up to us to get it done. Um, and didn't really micromanage us at all. Let us go. And then as, as I got more in depth and a lot of, a lot of the people, when you first start, you're calling people who had three, four, five tickets for, for the race, just smaller numbers. So you can just pump them out. It's easier to fit them in. And then as you get going, some of the bigger leads will come trickle down to us. So my last year I was, I was only making 50, 60 calls a day, but I was touching base with people who purchase 50, 60, 70 tickets type deal. Um, working with some groups that purchase upwards of 400 tickets. Um, I think my biggest group was actually for um, NASCAR, the Xfinity series race, the support series race. I sold, I sold 800 group, 800 tickets to um, a group 
Um, so just as you get more of a grasp on the events, the ins and outs of things, I mean, like I said, being there for seven years, there, there were probably, uh, I was probably one of five people that knew most, the most about the, all of the events at IMS in the entire company. Um, I would, I mean, I would be willing to bet that as far as the ins and outs of how all of the races went. Um, I probably was in the top five of knowing all of all the information. So call volume was down a little bit, but I was making a bigger impact on a bottom line type deal. So do you think it was a little bit different working there at the IMS as opposed to maybe working for a team and trying to sell individual tickets for, for ball games? Um, I mean, you know, just me with my history being from Indianapolis and going to the race a bunch of times, I mean, you're usually calling on legacy ticket buyers and you're not necessarily, I mean, you're going after new, new clients too. But I mean, at the same time, you know, when you're making a call, you're probably getting, I'm imagining you're getting a little bit more friendly reception than if you were just calling for a, you know, a Tuesday night ball game, you know, Cubs and Reds. Yep. 100%. So it's, I mean, we had people are receptive to our calls because what we offer, they have, they've, maybe they've attended for 15, 20 years. And it's just, they wait. A lot of people, they would wait to buy tickets. So I would call them. They, they knew I would be calling them. They knew they liked dealing with me. So they would wait for me. So um, I had folks like that. Um, and you're selling, like selling for an event versus selling for, when I was selling for lacrosse, we had, we only had 10 home games, but still people could, they could teeter totter, like, like eh, well, they'll push it off. They'll push it off. They'll push it off. And then if they buy, they buy, if they don't, they don't. Um, whereas Indianapolis 500 or the Brickyard 400, like this is the date you have one date, you're either coming or you're not. So it made it a little bit easier of a sell. Um, now you still had people who would be angry that, why would I be calling them? How dare I? <laughs> Mr. I'm on a do not call list type deal when all this other stuff. Um, but you still have angry customers for sure, but um, they're a lot more receptive to um, to me calling them because like I said, 80% of the people I called at my time at IMS, they had a history with IMS. So you said you kind of want to get out of the, the sales side of things and, and now you're in sport and entertainment travel. So tell us about your responsibilities with that and who are the people you're dealing with and um, maybe a little bit about your day to day. Yeah. So um, I'm an event manager here with sports entertainment travel and I very rarely deal with the end customer. Um, so we'll use, um, we'll use this, uh, App State Wisconsin trip that I'm supposed to be on this weekend. So um, our sales team, they sell it to, so the, the trip is with Appalachian State. Um, so in this, in this partnership is their athletic department. So their athletics runs their fan travel type deal. So um, it comes from the sales team. They have the discussion at the beginning of the season with them saying, hey, what are some games that you guys would be receptive in doing this trip for and with App State, Wisconsin was the biggest game on their schedule. So of course we're going to Madison. Um, so they kind of go over, this is what we're looking at. What do you guys want to do? So then it gets turned over to me. And so from there I research city of Madison, um, their um, hotels, best hotels in Madison or the Madison area. Um, and then I reach out to the hotels try to just get group block rates, um, just very general, just group rates on, um, hey, this is about how many rooms I think I'll need. Give me, what's 50 rooms, how, what's, what's my rate gonna look like? Um, and then we'll throw that together. I'll get in contact with ground transportation. If we, if we don't have a hotel that's walking distance to the stadium, we will, um, we'll do buses. We'll do motor coaches for them. And then all of our trips always, um, we tell, we like to have um, a welcome event the first night everyone arrives. So with this trip, with this trip, it would have been a Friday, Saturday, leave on Sunday. Um, so Friday night, we would have done a welcome event. And those are typically just depending on the area, we like to do um, nice bars um, or event spaces 
where we can have food and drink in there. And it's just for a th just, it's just an extra thing for the folks to do. Um, sometimes we'll get a speaker if the athletic department, um, in this case, if they are trying to push something, because a lot of times this will go out to a lot of bigger donors and things mm -hmm. like that, that'll be on this trip. So if they're, if the school has an agenda that they want to push to get in front of these folks, then it gives them the opportunity to speak. Um, and then in this case, um, I think we were also going to do, um, we were going to run a shuttle back and forth to the stadium for um, tours of Camp Randall Stadium, just because Camp Randall, it's a, um, it's a historic stadium and things like that. And then on Saturday, so Saturday morning, we would then do, we would leave early and then roll into a tailgate. We'd do their tailgate beforehand. Then they'd go to the game. We'd bust them back to the hotel and then they would kind of be, um, on their way. So I, I set up everything as far as the trip goes. I set up everything outside of that. Um, we use a call center. We have a call center right now. Our call center is based out of Alabama. Um, and and all, every school has a unique phone number that when this, these trips are marketed out, a lot of times it's via email by the school. Um, folks can call in, they can go online, book these trips. So I really don't see a customer until they get, um, they arrive for the trip. And then it's just the interaction with the folks at that point when they're, when they're there. And then we get them A to B and then we send them on their way at the end. Hey, so it sounds like you're doing a lot of logistics for the company, which I think to me, I think that would be a real fun role. So um, what are some of the most memorable trips that, that you've got to go on? Um, I actually haven't been on a lot because um, I started, I started this a year ago next week. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we did a couple cool ones. Um, Boston College played Notre Dame last year. And so Notre Dame's in South Bend, but we stayed in Chicago. And just because, so if we do something like that, no one wants, no one's going to travel. South Bend, Indiana is not going to be like, hey, honey, let's go for a weekend in South Bend, Indiana. No, we don't do that. Um, we take them to Chicago. Um, and then we rented a private train and we took, we took a, eight car private train from Millennium Station to South Bend. Um, we had that thing loaded up, booze, food. I mean, there were some people that were drunk before we hit Indiana and we left at <laughs> seven in the morning. And uh, so we hit, we hit it down there. So that, that was just a cool experience just because just taking the private train, the folks, folks had a great time with that. Um, and then the bull trip with Minnesota, I was, I was in charge of that trip and we did. So for their welcome event, we rented two yachts. And so we did, a, we were in Tampa. So we did we three hour yacht cruise through Tampa Bay, um, had a full fully catered meal on there, um, DJs. That was really cool. And then we did our pregame tailgate in Tampa across the street is the New York Yankees minor league baseball stadium. And we had 1300 Minnesota fans at the tailgate at the, at, uh, the Yankees minor league stadium. And it was really cool. Really cool. So how much would a package like that cost for a fan ballpark, you know, for like for, for the Minnesota trip, you're an alumni um, and you want to go. Yeah. So the Minnesota bull trip, um, there were a couple different options. Um, we did charge, they were, they had enough folks and enough interest and demand. Um, we did charter a plane for them. So I think um, here, I'm going to, I can tell you the exact price for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk and buy time. Um, let's see. Actually, I, off the top of my head, I think it was around 3,000, a little over 3,000. Um, whereas, so that was for the fully chartered and then take out about 1,000 to $1,200 for the, um, the charter. Let's see here. Give me one second. Out the back. All right, so so our fully oh I was on so it was twenty four hundred dollars for the air air inclusive twenty four hundred um, we did if we did just the ground package it was half that twelve hundred dollars just okay. for the hotel and the hotels we stay at we stay at full service properties um, we stay at Marriott Water Street's one of the best hotels. Um, in Tampa, right on the water. Um, they actually build building a JW Marriott right next to it. That's going to be even better. It should probably be, it's supposed to be done for the Super Bowl, but um, 
so we stay at full, full service properties um, there. And then we also did a, a game day only option for folks who just wanted to do, maybe they didn't want to stay, they stayed at a different hotel or they live locally and they just came over for, they wanted to be a part of the game. So the game day only one included the, the tailgate and the bus trans, transportation from the hotel to the stadium. None of our packages included tickets. Um, okay. So that was only two fifty to do to do that portion of it, um, but yeah. And then inside this, we everyone we have souvenirs that we give them um, that we work with the school on on doing some unique souvenirs um, for everyone. So and then just your normal. So those the bowl trips are a little more pricey, um, and then the, the bowl depends on the price as well. If they're going to the Boise famous Idaho Potato Bowl, they ain't gonna, they're not going to pay. $2,500 to go to Boise, Idaho. So that price would be a lot less. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of the same way for our um, weekend trips. Those, those are much lower. We try to keep those under a thousand depending on what city we're going to and how many days. Now, I know for me, and then this is my last question. I'm going to open it up to you guys. If you have any Q and A that you want to ask Ryan, who was just in your shoes about a decade ago, right? So oh, don't say that. Holy cow. <laughs> And I, it was like two decades for me. So, um, you know, something like a job like this would have been right up my alley. I know you're dealing with a lot of logistics and, and you're dealing with a lot of people and, you know, you got to make sure things are done on schedule. And I'm sure there's probably some points that are pretty stressful because it's like, man, I really need this person to come through to make sure that, you know, everything's running on time and you get to travel. Um, so what are some of the skills that our students need to be doing what it is that you're doing and like any other advice that, that you would have? Yeah, your time management's key. Um, I didn't have a lot of time management skills. Um, when I was your guys' age, I, it was probably my senior year before I developed any of them. So, um, and then just as you're going, time management's key, especially when you're working on a lot of these trips. Um, so for instance, these bowl games, um, we start working on these bowl trips in right around this time this time and in October season just started. So we have no clue what schools are going where the school is the absolute last thing we know um, for a lot of these bowls. So, I mean, you have to, you're, we're working on, I think we were, I was, I called on 12 different bowl bowls. I mean, we only ended up with 12 total teams, but we had to call, we called hotels for all 36 of the bowls that were offered. So just juggling, knowing which juggling all these hotels for all these different cities and keeping all of these in line and knowing and then doing the exact same with ground transportation um pre-game locations welcome event locations just being able to juggle all of this time with that i mean thankfully that most of our trips are done by the time we're doing we're really diving into this bowl game stuff um but I mean, right now, I mean, if I was traveling this week to Madison, next week I'd be going, I would probably be off next week, but then Alabama Ole Miss is the first weekend in October or Wisconsin Notre Dame is that first weekend in October. There could be two or three trips in one weekend that I'd be working on, um, let alone ones coming the week after or two weeks after, things like that. So you just have to stay on top of all of this with your time. That's probably the biggest key. Um, and then you just have to be willing to talk to people. Um, I mean, that your person, your person, interpersonal skills, being able to talk to people, know how to properly talk to people so you don't sound uneducated. Um, you don't want to be, you don't want to, don't take any offenses, but you don't want to sound 22 years old when you're on the phone. Um, you want to sound more, just because people won't take you as serious, it sounds bad, but it's just the honest truth. Um, you have to sound a little bit older than you are, more mature than you probably are. I have to sound more mature than I am um, at 31. So just your communication skills got to be huge on uh, time management. Those are really the two main things that we have here. Well, we even talk about that in our sport management capstone class right now as we, we partner with the Mad Ants and do ticket sales with them. And, and what Ryan's saying is that you know, you don't want to sound 22. He's not talking about the register of your voice, but it's just, it's being prepared and you know who you're talking to, what it is you're selling, or, you know, in your case, you know, the schedule and, 
and, and everything else. And it's just, you know, showing up, knowing exactly what it is that you're, the message you're trying to convey and then doing it, you know, and, and not being scattered brain. So, um, not that you guys would because you're amazing, but you know, for those aren't who are not with us today. Um, so I'll open it up to you guys. Any, uh, any Q and a that you have for, for Ryan. That's what's your, Ryan what's Ryan. your favorite part about the job and what's your least favorite part? Yeah. The travel's the best travel's the best. I've never, my first eight years, um, as a working professional, I didn't travel. I mean, working at IMS, I did. I got, I had a lot of cool perks working at IMS, doing things for IMS, but any of the other IndyCar races, I didn't travel for any other IndyCar races working for the lacrosse team. I didn't travel to away games. So just being able to travel and execute, I'm um, going to see a lot of cool parts of the country. I would have been a lot of really cool places. I was supposed to spend Thanksgiving this year in the Cayman Islands for a basketball tournament. Um, that's not happening. Um, least favorite part? Ugh, I don't, I don't know. Um, stupid people at hotels. That's my least favorite part. You get some, that sound, that sounds really bad, but just some people, just unresponsive, unresponsive people are probably the, the biggest pet peeve just because I have a deadline, especially around bowl season. When you have a deadline, things have to be done because as soon as, as soon as a team as soon as the bowls are announced, we go live and we have to have all of the uh, information there and ready to go. We got to be able to flip the switch, turn it on so we can sell because we sell 75%. So of those 5,000 travelers that we traveled uh, last December for bowl season, 75% of those were sold within the first 48 hours. Is there like a, is there any opportunity to move up within the own, within your own uh, company? Yeah, our company is really small, actually. Um, there's probably six of us. Um, we were affected some by the, the COVID stuff, but full company, top to bottom, there's six of us. Um, and we, we are acquired by um, last January, a larger travel company um, that does a lot of similar things that we do, but they, they do more um, national parks and international travel. Um, they acquired us for the sports piece. Um, so there's, there's huge growth, um, where we had meetings a couple weeks ago about how can we grow, where, what can we become, um, official travel partner as, um, whether that's maybe becoming the official travel partner for a basketball tournament. So like the Cayman Islands classic, um, it's one of the smaller known, basketball preseason college basketball tournaments but it puts stuff on our resume so we can grow maybe it's the jimmy v classic or the maui invitational where we're official travel partner maybe we're official travel partner with someone um indianapolis motor speedway um just other big bigger names just keep adding on to that so that's going to drive more folks to us and then as we grow um our president thinks we can grow 5x in the next five years so if if five years from now we're five times as big, that means we have um, a lot more events. That means we have a lot more staff. So there's always just ways to move up in there and then things of that nature. I mean, big picture down the road, if I'm working here for 20 years and I can become president of the company, cool. But right now I love doing this event stuff. So I'm just trying to focus where I'm at right here. Come on, what you got for me now? You know, your classes must be boring, Pod. No one talks in these things. I think I just kind of leave them <laughs> amazed and dazed. and <laughs> It's just that. It, that's it. We're that good. I, yeah, I'm just so intimidating. What are your hours like? Uh, we work um, nine to six, no, do the normal week, um, just because – um, so there's only three of us in Indianapolis. Um, the president of our company, she works out of Champaign. Um, we got folks that work. You find this a lot with folks that in travel companies. Um, they're spread out across the country. So we got folks in Seattle. We got folks in Raleigh, North Carolina. So just to kind of cover everyone's gap. Nine to six, typically. Um, the month of December, I think we worked 30 plus straight days, 16 hour days. 
um, just because we had to get things done. Um, but I mean, they're, they're pretty relaxed. I, I wear jeans to work every day, which is nice. I put a polo for on for you guys today, but normally <laughs> I'm in a, in a t-shirt or, or something like that. But, but it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty lax. And as long as we're getting stuff done, there's not a, there's not someone standing over my shoulder, making sure I'm getting my things done or staying until six or until five or making sure I'm here at nine. It's just, it's pretty lax. It's December. I imagine the busiest just because of the bowl season. Yep. Bowl travel is the, the biggest, um, like I said, five, I mean, 5,000 travelers. It's probably 80% of our business um, in December. So it's just having so much go on, not knowing until, not knowing until um, December um, and uh, not knowing until after all the championships are done and having to have all it done. Because if we waited until the bowl was announced, we would have no shot. So just all that preparation we have to have beforehand. Well, that's um, what I was just wondering. I mean, is it all systems go right now expecting to, to still travel during bowl season? Or is it a little bit of still kind of wait and see depending on what happens with, with COVID? Yeah, I was calling on um, hotels in Atlanta yesterday and today for the Peach Bowl. And um, so we're, we're doing it. Um, we're just focused on the New Year's Six Bowls right now. So we're okay. a lot narrow. I'm not focused on the Idaho Potato Bowl or all these smaller bowls just because realistically they're not going to happen. Um, the money's not there to make them happen and there's not enough teams playing to make those happen. So we're just focused on the main the main revenue generators of um of them so and having those calls with the folks at the hotels they're not sure yet uh, i think okay. we're too early into the college football season it's great that it's happening um but we got to see it run its course a little bit longer and make sure it's gonna happen um but and then it then after that it comes down to each individual bowl the ncaa can't just come out and say fans are allowed type deal. It's got to be a city by city location type deal. That's going to be, they have to do state or state laws or not really laws, but how they're hand state guidelines, city guidelines, things like that. So you said you're going to be in like Madison this weekend. Do you guys do like multiple locations? Like would someone be in Michigan, someone be like in Nebraska or whatever? Like yeah, it just, it just depends on, where our schools want to play. So just looking at the schedule. So last week or yeah, last weekend would have been opening weekend. We had three games scheduled. So our staff, it just, it's just a divide and conquer type deal. Um, so last weekend we would have had, we would have had three this weekend. We would have only, we had had one or two next weekend. We were doing Oklahoma at army. Um, that first weekend in October, that was a that was a popular weekend. There were some good games that weekend. We would have had two or three then, so it just um, we would have divided it up and then travel. And then bowl games, bowl games they're spaced out pretty well. So some of us, so I started at the Peach Bowl, so I was there the first two nights of the Peach Bowl, um, the arrival day, game day. Is that right? Yeah, arrival day, game day. And then I left once, as soon as that game kicked off, I left Atlanta to go to Tampa. And I was, I was in Tampa for seven days. So it just depends on how the games are spaced out. We'll hop from bowl to bowl just to be support staff and just help out um, where we can. Gotcha. Do you get to enjoy your time down there at all? Oh. I know you're working, but at, like at, at nights, do they say, all right, you're off the clock and do whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, we did – um, so we, we try to get there for all of our trips at least a day before any of our travelers get in. Um, so for Outback Bowl, this was the first bowl we'd done in a while for Minnesota. So we wanted to have a real, make a really good impression. So I was in, I was in um, Tampa two days before any guests showed up. So I was a little more freedom to do that. And then um, – that was over New Year's, so we had a, a small New Year's party with the folks um, with Minnesota, and then after they were done, we kind of did went out and did our own thing there, and then the travelers, they flew out, their charter left at like 6 a.m. the morning on the 2nd, 
and I didn't fly out until 6 a.m. on the 3rd, so I had that whole day on the 2nd in Tampa by myself to kind of just explore the city and just do my own thing, sit by the pool, things of that nature. They're really, they're really good at giving us time to, um, boss knows that how hard we work and going through that. I mean, cause she's in it with us. I mean, she travels to bowl games. Our, our staff so small, that is small enough to where just because you're the president of our company, um, doesn't mean that you don't do a bowl. You don't get a, you don't have to be a part of it. So she understands. So, um, she's good at making sure we have days on both ends to kind of enjoy. If we would have, so if Ohio State would have beat Clemson, we would have had Ohio State in the national championship in New Orleans. And we were looking forward to that because we would have had a day or two on both ends to kind of celebrate as a team for such a great time and enjoy the game and enjoy New Orleans as well. Did the president of the company, she start the company or is she given the? Nope, she started, yeah, so her and her dad have been so we've been working with Ohio State since 1968 our company's kind of had different variations as far as names and things of that nature so her and her dad started the company in the 60s and then it just developed into a bunch of different things um it's been sports entertainment travel for 10 to 12 years um so yeah she started yep she the current the current setup yeah that was she started it And kind of grew it from there. Anything else? What else you right. for me? Come on. You guys <laughs> got to have more than that for me. What do you guys want to do? What do you guys want to do when you graduate? How old are you guys, by the way? Any of you guys seniors, juniors, sophomore, freshman? Senior. Seniors. So what do you – Adam, what do you want to do when you graduate? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. I want to work in sports one way or another. But I mean, what, first, what do you want to do? Um, I was I was you. I was you when I graduated. I was I want to work in sports. Ever since I was in mid, when, when as soon as I was hit middle school, I was like I'm working in sports. I don't know what I don't know what that means. My end my end result has changed probably ten times what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. but I know that I had to work in sports. I wanted to work in sports. Um, so I get I get when you say I want to work in sports of some kind, um, but I'm just curious. I've always, found, I've always found sports marketing like a I mean, uh, attraction, I guess you could say. Um, and there's that can be pretty broad, too. So, um, What's your sport? I'm a baseball player. Do you want to work in baseball? Uh, that would be ideal. Okay. Cool. So, cool. Where are you from? I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. There's minor league team in Kalamazoo, isn't there? Um, no, well, but we – well, there used to be a there used to be a um, indie ball team there, but now it's um, it's summer collegiate, and I actually play for the for the team out of Kalamazoo. So okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What? I'm I'm you shouldn't you shouldn't have talked because I'm gonna hit you <laughs> with all these questions. Um, have you worked in baseball before? I haven't yet, actually. Just played. Yep, just played. I mean, actually, I shouldn't say that. I. I uh, I did some training out of training facility and kind of worked there for a little bit. But other than that, I haven't worked in like with like um, like a front office or anything yeah. like that. Did you do any internships? Uh, that was my internship was with that. Oh, training okay. facility. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Cool. All right, Nicole, you said you're a senior. What do you want to do? I'm a junior. You're only a junior. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you want to do when you graduate? Um, kind of like you I've bounced around since middle school I first wanted to be a sports broadcaster um and now I'm kind of leaning more towards like front office work um but I'm not exactly sure at the moment for sure do you have a preferred sport um probably hockey okay do you play on the hockey team at Trine no I do not I stopped after my senior year of high school too many concussions all right all right. I've only been on ice skates once and it didn't go well. So <laughs> that's how it usually goes. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's hard for tall guys. The center of gravity, <laughs> it's just too high. All right. How about the rest of you guys? What do you guys want to do when you graduate? Any of you know? Have anyone have ideas? 
I would like to work in like marketing, whether that's for a professional sports team, like I'd probably want to stick within the major three, like football, basketball, baseball. Um, but whether that's like advertisements, stuff like that. Okay. So I challenge you guys that if you want to work for a big three sports, big four sports team, you guys are going to have to work your asses off. I'll tell you that right now. It's tough. They're very competitive. Those jobs are very competitive, what you guys want to do. And I know all of you guys want to do it right out of college. Um, it's going to be tough. You guys got to start now. Start now. Internships. Try to find free work anywhere you can. I mean, if you can find work where you can get paid, find work that can get paid. But if you can't, because especially now, a lot of people don't have the extra money. So you guys got to you gotta find something to set you, yourself apart from everyone else. And the only way to do that nowadays is with experience. Um, who you know is very important nowadays. Um, people will take, people are less willing to go through a stack of resumes this high if they have someone that they can say, hey, I know Andrew, here's his resume. Hope they'll put you on top of the pile. Um, they, if someone can vouch for you, vouch for your work, they'll put you on, you, you get expedited. It's, it's not the best, it's not the best practice in, in all cases, but it's honest, that's just how it goes nowadays. Um, so find as much work as you guys can do. Um, if you want to, if you want to work for a front office, if you want to work in marketing, you got to work, you got to work a lot harder trying to find where you can go. doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to go the sales route. Uh, you don't have to jump in. You don't have to jump straight into a ticket office team. Um, do you guys know why they put people in ticket office teams at the beginning? Does anyone know why? Did they do that because you, so being on, I didn't understand it at first either, um, but I learned it pretty quickly is because once you, when you're doing the ticket sales, when people have questions, they call the ticket office. When people, when you're on a call, calling a ticket holder, they'll ask you every question about the event, every question about the company. The ticket staff probably knows more about the organization as a whole than just about anyone else in the entire company. So they do that, they test your retention, how quickly, how much knowledge you can retain and then give it back to a customer. Um, and it's honestly, it's the best learning tool um, for you, the individual. Um, but then again, if you wanna work in marketing, if you wanna work in sales, if you wanna work in ops, they're always looking for interns to do every department of that. So, so try to find Try to find one of the Fort Wayne teams that are doing that or wherever y'all are from if, across the country. If there's, if there's a minor league team around that can, you can work for in the summer, I mean, you guys are having an extended winter break. Um, hop in for a couple weeks there if, they're, if, they're, if they'll take you. Um, don't be afraid to ask someone, hey, can I be a part of your staff? You don't have to pay me. If you're in a situation where you don't need money, they're going to say yes, more than likely. So be willing and open to do all of that kind of stuff. Anything that can set you apart. Yeah, I was just thinking about that too. There's not a lot of places that'll say no to free help. Um, and, you know, you're going in there with the mindset. It's like, hey, I, I just want to learn. Um, whether it's job shadowing, informational interviews, or like Ryan was saying, hey, you know, give me a couple of days just to, you know, help you out with something. I mean, the worst they're going to tell you is no. But I think you'd be surprised at how many people would be like, yeah, come on. Because like Ryan was saying, he, he was in your spot, you know, not, not too long ago. So um, it's a small world, sports is, and, and people are willing to help. Yep. Yep. All right. Anything else, guys? All right. Um, Ryan, really appreciate it. Um, you've always been great with our students. And you know, we'll continue to have you back as, as much as possible. And I hope you actually get to travel a little bit more here, here come December. That makes two of us. In January, after I got back from the Outback Bowl, uh, I got Chinese takeout and my fortune said, you'll have great life perspective through your travels this year. And I was like, hey, this is going to be good. I had some nice, great travels lined up and I haven't gone anywhere. I've stayed in Indianapolis. So I don't know what that means yet fully, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, I got a lot, we got a lot of cool trips lined up for 2021. So 
So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I appreciate you guys having me, having me join you. Um, have Pod, Pod, you have all my contact information, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we can send that out to everybody if they want to contact you. If y'all have any questions, need help with anything down the road, let me know. Any of you guys are in Indianapolis, interested in any type of motorsports, I can probably squeeze you in. I can get you in an IMS. I still have, I still have a pretty decent pull out there. Um, hopefully the travel market rebounds. Maybe we can use a couple of you guys down the road. Um, but no, any questions you guys have, anything I can do to help you guys, please don't hesitate to reach out. Man, appreciate it. Thanks so much, Ryan. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. All right, Thank guys. You. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you.